End of the World French, Le fin du monde is a 1931 French science fiction film directed by Abel Gantz based on the novel Omega, The Last Days of the World by Camille Flammarion. The film stars Victor Franson as Marshal Novalik, Colette Darfel as Genevieve de Merci, Abel Gantz as Jean Novalik, and Jean Brindai as Madame Novalik. The plot concerns a comet hurtling toward Earth on a collision course and the different reactions people have to the impending disaster. Scientist Marshall Novalik who discovers the comet, seeks a solution to the problem and becomes a fugitive after skeptical authorities blame him for starting a mass panic. End of the World was director Abel Gantz's first sound film. The original film was to be over three hours long, but the backing production took the film from Gantz, and cut it to be 105 minutes. It was again cut on its release in the United States under the title of Paris After Dark. Neither abridged version of the film was well received by audiences or critics. Plot. <laughs> <laughs> The film opens with Jean Novalik Abel Gantz playing Jesus Christ in a passion play. Isabel Bolin Sylvie Grenade attends with her boyfriend stock promoter Schomburg Samson Feinsilber who is entranced by the blonde actress playing Mary Magdalene, Genevieve de Merci Colette Darfel. Genevieve defies her scientist father Monsieur de Merci Jean Deard to propose to Jean, who tells her that they cannot marry. Back home, Genevieve's father, jealous of the wealthy Marshal Novalik Victor Franson's fame, accepts money from Schomburg to build an observatory better than Novalik's. Schomburg then announces his intention to court de Mercy's daughter. As Jean aids a young woman being abused, he is accused of rape and is critically wounded by a blow to the head. Schomburg accompanies Genevieve to a fancy party, but takes her back to her apartment and rapes her. In his observatory, Marshall detects the Lexels comet is on a collision course with Earth. Jean himself begins to predict a coming apocalypse, and claims that the cataclysm has arrived to save the hearts of man. Marshall confides to his colleagues that the comet will strike in 114 days. After Jean is taken to an asylum, Marshall and Genevieve listen to his phonographs which instruct Genevieve to abandon her worldly life and help Marshall inaugurate a new world government. Jean's voice tells them they must marry and become the shepherd and shepherdess of humanity. Genevieve sees a vision of Jean as Christ. With 92 days left, Schomburg invests heavily in armaments while Marshall goes to the rich Worcester and tells him that the world will end. Motivated to help, Worcester deals with Schomburg and gives Marshall money to buy a newspaper and a broadcast station. Genevieve has remained single but helps to organize Radio Marshall Navalik's broadcasts of peace bulletins. Marshall's Confederates jam official radio news, blocking warnings that war mobilization is imminent. Marshall announces the coming end of the world. Stock markets plunge around the globe but Schomburg continues to buy. De Mercy and Schomburg accuse Novalik of kidnapping Genevieve and using the comet as a hoax to destroy the economy. A government minister orders the exchanges closed and the arrest of Marshall and Worcester. But Marshall's agents learn of the arrest warrant with a hidden microphone. The newspaper is confiscated and the radio station destroyed, and Marshall and Worcester escape. The government hides the truth which allows the stock market to recover. Schomburg holds a party the very night Marshall claims that the comet will become visible. Schomburg tells gangsters he'll pay a million francs if Marshall and Worcester are found dead before morning. Genevieve returns to her father and joins Schomburg in the garden. The jealous Isabel runs to warn Marshall Novalik. At the party, the comet comes into sight. Isabel helps Marshall escape and learns that war mobilization will soon be announced. 
he and Worcester rush to destroy the government's radio antenna in the Eiffel Tower. Genevieve tips off Marshall by telephone that Schomburg and his killers are ascending in an elevator. Worcester warns Genevieve to stay on the ground and uses a cutting torch to sever the elevator cable, but Genevieve had taken the elevator as well and is killed with the rest. The world can now see the Lexels comet with their own eyes, and Radio Novalik resumes broadcasting. Marshall calls for the first convention of the General States of the Universe on 5 August, the night before the collision. People around the world begin to pray as the comet looms larger in the sky and extreme weather ensues including blizzards, storms, tidal waves. Riots break out and a thousand elite revelers bring musicians into a great hall for a feast and orgy. Monks carrying candles interrupt the orgy and lead the group in prayer. As the orbits of the comet and the Earth converge, Marshall Novalik addresses the One World Congress, which unanimously agrees to unite all governments into a single harmonious entity. The Lexels comet narrowly misses the Earth. Much of the world has been reduced to rubble, but life will go on. Topic: <laughs> Production. Director Abel Gantz had meditated on the idea of end of the world since 1913 and after creating the film Napoleon in 1927, he convinced himself and backers to go forward with the project. Gantz originally was going to title the film The End of the World, as seen, heard and rendered, by Abel Gantz. Filming began in mid-1929 and was finished roughly a year later. The film had been edited to a running time of just over three hours. When the backers felt that the film was becoming far too long, they took production control away from Gantz and cut the film to 105 minutes. It was shot at the Joinville Studios in Paris. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Cast. Abel Gantz as Jean Novalik, Colette Darfel as Genevieve de Mercy. Sylvie Gantz as Isabel Bolin as Sylvie Grenade Jean Brindo as MME Novalik Samson Feinsilber as Schomburg Georges Collin as Worcester Jean Deard as M. de Mercy Victor Franson as Marshal Novalik Release The film was released in France in January 1931 under the title Le Fin du Monde at a rough length of 105 minutes and was never shown in the United States in this form. Although American director Cecil B. DeMille showed interest in purchasing the rights to the film, it was released in 1934 by American film distributor Harold Orton who trimmed the running time to 54 minutes in the fashion of various exploitation films of the time. Orton's version was re-titled Paris After Dark and included a new opening by Dr. Clyde Fisher discussing the scientific nature of the film. Orton's version of the film removed most of the film's dialogue filling it with title cards and made the leading character Jean Novalik into a minor character who only has a few scenes in the background. Reception The film received a disastrous reception from audiences and critics alike. Contemporary critic Philippe Soupal described it as portentously naive and blatantly unrealistic. Director Abel Gantz himself referred to the film as an abortive work, ruined by the producer taking the film away from him so he could edit it himself. The lack of success of End of the World forced Gantz to turn to more conventional projects in order to continue work as a filmmaker. 